Hello again, everyone, and welcome to The Frontline with Joe and Joe. Joe Pasillo and Joe Resinello, and once more, dear friends, let us go into the breach. And Joe, I, I guess we're really in the breach now because the, the Kung Flu has us uh, separated. However, we're, we're socially distancing. We're, social, we're being responsible Americans. We're socially distancing. And uh, for all of you uh, wonderful listeners out there and the people that look forward to hearing us at the front line with Joe and Joe and are contributing tremendously to our success, we're going to be uh, – Kung Flu has an unintended consequence because uh, Joe and I are going to be using a different technology now. And from now on, I'm going to be sitting in uh, where I am, and Joe's going to be where he is. And we're going to be uh, – tonight's program is going to be pre-recorded. Starting next week, we are going to go live, but in this format. And it's going to give us, give us the ability to show you a lot more, uh, to bring uh, some video clips uh, that we pull up from the Internet that we could show you the people saying these things rather than – telling you about it or reading it ourselves. Uh, so, you know, we owe you as our loyal supporters um, to constantly be improving our show while at the same time maintaining, uh, you know, the, the, the reasons why we do the show and our principles. And we're going to do just that, but we're going to make it a whole lot more entertaining for you. So having said that, uh, let's start our conversation at the front line. Joe, where are we headed? Let's go to our good friend in Louisiana, uh, to Senator John Kennedy. He had a now, great- let me, let me, let me preface this, okay? There's a few in the last few years, all right, I would say during, uh, starting at a time of uh, around the middle of the Obama administration, um, there's a few politicians, let's call them politicians, I know that's a bad word, who I really like. Jim Jordan, really like that guy. Senator Josh Hawley. We've mentioned him a number of times. Uh, Rand Paul, um, I love him. Kennedy's becoming my hero. And not only because of the fact that he's spot on, but the dude's hysterical, man. The the, the dude just, the things he, we'll get into it, but go ahead. What, 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 what do we got? Well, no, you got a, we got a good clip, Joe. You can pull it up. I think it's, I, I could read it, but it won't do it justice with his accent and the whole deal. I think you just got to, you got to play it. All right. So, so this is, this is, um, this is Senator Kennedy uh, with Maria Bartiromo. I think it was on Sunday Morning Futures where um, he's talking about spending porn in the latest stimulus bill. So let's let's hear it right from the good senator's mouth. You know, life is hard, but it's harder when you're stupid. <laughs> and uh, there's an enormous amount of spending porn on pet projects that was put into this bill by some powerful members of Congress. They think the American people, I guess, are morons and won't notice, but they did. Uh, it's it's why um, so many Americans think there's no intelligent life in Washington D.C. It's why Congress polls right up there with robocalls and uh, and sinkholes. Um, th- this is what many Americans heard members of Congress say: "Oh my God, we could run out of ventilators. Oh my God, people could die. Quick, let's give money to the Kennedy Center." And the post office. <laughs> no, not for nothing. Not for nothing. That's hysterical. And he, and, and, but, he but, 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 but he's spot on, all right? The, the, the larger point here, obviously, is that they've taken the left, the Democrats, they take this opportunity where they have a bill. Now, this is why, this is why conservatives have such a hard time is because every time we want specific legislation about a specific thing that is going to benefit uh, the American people, okay, they must always try to throw things in that have nothing to do with the legislation. And, and, and it amazes me that they get away with this, because let's take a bill, a hypothetical bill, okay, that would benefit the American people and most senators, let's say, and members of the House of Representatives could get behind it. Pick an issue, okay? But something where the vast majority of the American people want it and the politicians would be on very safe ground voting for it, okay? What do the Democrats always do? 
They then add, they add, they add, and the Republicans do it too, don't get me wrong, but those are the establishment Republicans who we're fighting against also. But they keep adding things in that make it untenable if I was a senator for me to vote for that legislation because you've added things in that I'm opposed to, but you put it into legislation that has nothing to do with that thing. And therefore, if we vote against that bill, then they go out and say to the American people, the Republicans voted against the bill that was going to help you. No, I voted against what he was talking about. I'm voting against spending porn. I'm voting against you throwing things into legislation that has no business being there. And that's how they try to go out and score political points. So for him, see, the reason why he's, you know what they say, Joe, if you can make a good point, but you could do it with a little bit of humor, it's probably going to go over better because people will remember that you made them laugh, but then it'll make them think about what you said. That's what this guy's great at. He's great at this. Yo, life is hard. Life is hard. But it's harder when you're stupid. When you're stupid. And you that's see, and, 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 <laughs> and, and that's why I, 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 you know, it makes me want to move to Louisiana so I can have him as, as my senator as opposed to Bob Menendez. They think the American people are, I guess, a morons. Right. And won't notice, but they did. You know, and, th and, that, and that's the thing. We're, we're, we're focusing on it because it's, because it's John Kennedy and because he's funny. But it's just something that people need to be so aware of that the, this is an example of the left knowing no boundaries whatsoever. Did you, you hear recently? We're not going to cover it tonight. But did you hear that, that Nancy Pelosi wants to start an investigation into the administration's handling of the Kung flu? She's also going to be having um, her own press conferences to rival Trump's. Right. Right. Like, what, what are you in charge of? You're the Speaker of the House. The President is the executive. He is the one who is in charge right now. I know they hate that. They hate that whole I idea. I don't even know how you could allow that. Like, He's the president, like not for nothing. No one should even, what power does she have? Well, look, she, uh, the, she, she is the speaker of the house. She could go up in front of the cameras all she wants. The, the willing media, of course, is going to allow them, uh, give her any platform. Certainly CNN will. CNN hasn't even been covering his, his press conferences. Yeah, we're gonna uh, that. You know, not even covering it. Uh, yeah, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So, but again, it shows you, Joe, why one of the main obstacles for, for conservatives in this country is the media itself, not the First Amendment. You have the right to say what you want to say, but we have the right to inform the American people that these people are scumbag liars. They have a political agenda that they want to fulfill because they're political ideologues. And they're going to continue to do that no matter what. These people know no shame. Every time you think that maybe the brakes will get put on them a little bit and maybe they, they won't go that far because it might be a bridge too far, what do they do? They go, like you would have never, I would have never thought a month ago that they would actually start an investigation into Donald Trump's handling of the coronavirus. But they're actually going, they're calling for an investigation into the coronavirus, obviously for the purpose of impeaching him. This is, this is the world we live in. This is the world we live in. Well, let's talk all things Trump for a minute, Joe. Trump's approval rating is spiking. Hold on, hold on. I heard, I heard a noise just then. I heard a noise, Joe. Oh, oh it was the liberal brains exploding all across America. Donald Trump's approval ratings are spiking. And that's why Nancy Pelosi is having her press conference at the same time, because they don't know how to handle it. Over the past two weeks, Donald Trump's approval rating, and specifically the approval of his handling of the Chinese virus, has been spiking. You would think that most people would view this as a good thing. I mean, in the middle, the middle of a crisis, having faith in leadership is better than not having faith in leadership, right? For many on the left, though, these numbers are cause for consternation. Right. Let's look at a couple of uh, statements made from some of these pundits. Let's go to Anna Navarro, first and foremost. This is what she had to say. Who are these 51% of Americans who approve of the way this lying, narcissistic, science-denying, petty, partisan, infantile, intellectual wasteland 
lame excuse for a president with the vocabulary of a four-year-old. Apologies to the four-year-olds out there who is mishandling this crisis. Really? Well, my response is really, Anna Navarro? What do you, see, I would ask Anna Navarro because she's a conservative, by the way, she, as far as what I know, okay? And my wife can't stand her because she also calls herself Catholic, okay? What kind of, what kind of Republican does Anna Navarro want? Does she want a George Bush Republican who gave us Justice Roberts, okay? Does she want a Papa Bush Republican who gave us um, uh, Justice Anthony Kennedy? Or, or, or you know, I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to blast, you know, the, the, the arch conservative himself, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan gave us Sandra Day O'Connor. So, uh, or I'm sorry, I think it was Reagan who also gave us Kennedy. Uh, Papa Bush gave us Souter. Okay. So what, what, re what Republicans does she want? In other words, I have to worry about the fact that Donald Trump is screwed. I've been, my argument to, to an Anna Navarro is very simple. I finally have a president who gets down and dirty with the left and gets in the gutter with them. I've been asking for this for years. Somebody who goes over their heads to the American people. He uses Twitter. He uses language that she doesn't like. She calls it science. I, first of all, I don't understand that science denying. That, that, that's a typical leftist. In other words, all conservatives, of which she calls herself one, uh, deny science. Uh, infantile, intellectual wasteland. Who's more intellectually barren than CNN and the reporters at CNN? These people are intelligent. Jim Acosta's intelligent, really? He hasn't asked one good question in any press conference. Every question is a gotcha He's question. A hater. He's a hater. Right. Because, well, they, well, see, the reason why you're pointing this out, Joe, is that, yes, they're hating. Their brains are exploding because he's doing what he said. He's confronting the press. She calls it infantile, petty, and partisan. Okay. But you want to know something? There's, no, there's nobody more infantile than them. Just, I'll just give you an example. Maxine Waters. Okay. No, nobody more partisan. They are the most partisan group there are. Adam Schiff, uh, the Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, the rest of them. Uh, lame excuse for a president. You're a lame excuse for a reporter. You're a lame excuse for a conservative. And you're a lame excuse for a Roman Catholic. That's what I would tell her right to her face. We could go on and on. Um, at the end of the day, there's plenty more examples. But suffice to say, to those uh, for whom hating Trump has become the passion of a lifetime, the president's relative popularity is infuriating. Right. It's also confounding to them. And it's worth thinking about why. I mean, here's at the, the final thought. At the fate of Trump's reelection. It's not the bobblehead pundits. It's not PBS. It's not CNN. It's not MSNBC. This is not the time to peddle politics, but we, of course, will. For those counting on Joe Biden's confused and weird monologues in front of a bookshelf, the knives are coming out for Trump. The election is now about one thing and one thing only. It's the response to the coronavirus. Well, didn't Pat Buchanan say that? I recommend all people to read the article on the American conservative. He basically said the election is not about Trump versus Biden. It's Trump versus COVID-19. But let me ask that is your election. Now, let me ask you a question as far as uh, the, as far as entertainment is concerned. Okay. Meaning we as conservatives and Trump supporters being entertained by what the left is going to be doing. Okay. Frustrated but also entertained at the same time. You mentioned the knives coming out for Donald Trump. What's going to happen when he defeats this virus, and it will be his administration that defeats this virus? We get back to work going into the election, okay? We'll still be struggling a little bit, but the economy will be coming back strong. When are the knives coming out for Joe Biden from the left? Because he is incoherent at this point. They won't cover this. I don't know why they keep cutting to him. If they're trying to promote him, they should stay away from him right now. He can't, he, I'm not making a partisan statement. I'm making an objective statement. He's incoherent. When he makes a statement, you say, what? No, what I did agree. What did you just say? Joe, I'll be true with you. We covered this a couple of weeks ago. I believe it was on the Crusade Channel. I mean, Joe Biden is the exhausted example. Well, the exhausted answer that the Democrats have. Right. Fake Trump. He's basically 
what they're settling for. I think he's going to get crushed, actually. But that's what I mean. When the knives come out for him, and I believe that, listen, don't put, we live in a state, Joe, let me give our viewers a little bit of, a, a little bit of an example, okay, <clears throat> from a few years ago. But it shows you, it shows you um, a few points, actually. But number one, what the left is capable of, okay? Do you remember Senator Bob Torricelli? I do. Okay. Torricelli was, I believe, indicted, okay? He was either under investigation or indicted. And he got indicted after the, the deadline had passed to replace a candidate on a ticket. In this case, it was United States Senator from New Jersey, all right? And he... The, the 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 state basically said, and the fight in the in the state of New Jersey was, no, he's your candidate. Indicted, whatever, it doesn't matter. You had till a certain time to replace him. You did not replace him. And they kept saying, well, no, but we need a, a, a Democratic choice. You do. His name's Bob Torricelli. He's your candidate. The deadline is passed. You have to follow the rules. Leftists don't like to hear that. You have to follow the rules. You have to follow the law. Okay. Uh, they went to the, the, the Supreme Court of the state of New Jersey and the Politburo, which is known as the Supreme Court of the state of New Jersey, basically let the Democrats uh, replace Bob Torricelli and the Democrats held the seat because Torricelli was going to lose that seat to a Republican. I think it was Doug Forrester at the time. Now, why do I bring this up? You don't think the same thing's going to happen? Tr the coronavirus is beaten. The economy's starting to come back. The Democrats have already pushed back their election. Uh, excuse me, their convention, because they're trying to buy themselves time because they are planning to take the long knives out against Joe Biden. That's why. If you think that they're not capable of doing that, that's why I bring up Bob Torricelli. When they see a candidate is weak, they'll try to replace him, and they don't care what laws they break, what election laws they break. So that's why I say it's going to be fun and exciting and, yes, very entertaining um, when that happens, because it's going to happen. This virus is going to go away. The economy is going to start to come back. I won't have to sit in my house anymore. Um, I will then be able to get back to work. Okay, we're all going to get back to normal. And Trump is going to win. Again, because Biden is weak. He's the exhausted candidate. He doesn't put a coherent sentence together. And that's why when he, they see his numbers going up, they don't know how to react. They don't know how to react. Well, they're clearly scrambling. I mean, they're clearly scrambling, they're confused, and frankly, Joe, I think they're unsure on how to fight back. Um, but here's the thing, maybe they shouldn't be fighting back. Maybe they should start acting like Americans. What I mean by that is this is something that is affecting this country greatly. Right. People are sick, people are dying, and frankly, the economy is right now in the gutter. Maybe they shouldn't be fighting Trump. Maybe they should be working with them like Cuomo is working with them. By the way, the governor of California has also complimented Donald Trump. Maybe they should be taking that position. Maybe they would be looked at better by the American people. But they would feel like they would feel like they would feel like they don't want to make the mistake that Chris Christie made during Hurricane Sandy. When, they made, when he made Obama look presidential. And Obama was not on good, firm ground at that point. He was slipping in the polls. Christie let him come to New Jersey during Hurricane Sandy and allowed him to look presidential. Obviously, that helped Obama in the polls. And then Mitt Romney being somewhat of a weak candidate who didn't go for the jugular, Obama ended up winning. It's the same thing now. They're not going to take that chance. It doesn't matter to them that Cuomo's working with President Trump. They're gonna, they're, they don't care that he does. But at the same time, they're going to give Trump credit for nothing, for nothing. He could beat this virus and they'll just keep like Jim Acosta, keep saying, well, you could have done it sooner. You could have done it sooner. When did this happen? When did that happen? When did that happen? That, the implication is always that he didn't act quickly enough. Okay. So they're going to keep attacking Joe no matter what. And you, you mentioned this polls going through the roof. 60% of the American people approve of the job he's doing on the right. Kung flu. Okay, and 49% of the people give him, give him an overall approval rating on his overall job performance. That has them quaking in their boots. He's at highs on both. Okay, he is going to get reelected if things stay the way they do right now, meaning the, the virus will go like this, the economy will start coming back, and Trump's going to keep putting up his judges, which he has recently. They're in the news in Kentucky and I think in Wisconsin. 
and people are liking what he's doing. And yes, they do like the fact that he's calling out China. They like the fact that he's doing that. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but I want to get into, Joe, uh, how the media are basically trying to censor the FCC regarding uh, Trump's press conferences. Right. Um, there's an influ influential far-left media group that has petitioned the Federal Communications Commission to develop a wide-ranging censorship plan of the President Donald Trump's press conferences. Free Press, the group, calling for the censorship of broadcasts of the press conferences, said in its petition that it's a life and death issue. They are asking the FCC to limit the public's right to direct to hear directly from the president about the federal government's handling of the global pandemic, that any broadcasts of his press conferences come with a pronounced disclaimer. You know who needed a pronounced disclaimer for every lying word that ever came out of his mouth was Barack Obama. I don't care if it was on Fast and Furious, the IRS, Benghazi, all of it, the way, the way he used to talk about religious people in this country. If anybody needed a fact checker, it was him. But he's the president of the United States. And when he gets up to speak, I don't blame the press for wanting to cover it because he's the president. If he's a liar, I'll point out he's a liar. Other media outlets will point out he's a liar. But you cannot tell the FCC that they can't cover the president in need of the United States, no, especially they now. they don't want him to have those press conferences because they're effective and they're swaying the American people. And, but That's why, Joe? But why are they? You know why? Because he's looking like a guy who knows what he's doing. Because they hate him and the press is a working wing of the Democratic Party. This is what the SEC chairman, Brendan Carr, had to say about this. He said, this is a sweeping and dangerous attempt by the far left to weaponize the FCC's, the FCC against conservative media outlets and elected officials. They want to turn the FCC into a ro roving speech police empowered to go after the left's political opponents. Now that's the FCC commissioner, which is encouraging because he's actually fighting back. He's fighting back. You can't tell the FCC that they, you can't tell the Federal Communications Commission that they can't cover a press conference from the President of the United States. Again, let's say, let's say hypothetically, Trump is lying through his teeth. Fauci's lying through his teeth because Trump's telling him to, Dr. Birx, everybody's lying through their teeth. You're a free press. You don't free have press. to cover him. You don't have to cover him. You could do what CNN has been doing and cutting away from him, okay? Fox News and others will stay on the press conference, okay? And if you want to broadcast a program that runs parallel to that, that let's say contradict everything Trump's saying, you have every right to do that. Your problem is nobody's watching you. You understand what I mean, Joe? You're nobody's right. watching CNN. That, and, and because the, the market, they don't like, uh, let's say, how the market's reacting, which is more viewers are watching the president than are watching CNN. They want to then sick the government uh, on them and say, well, you can't broadcast this anymore. No, they, that's not the way it works in America. Isn't that what Obama did with the IRS? Basically, if you were a conservative group, he basically sent the secret police to attack you right. financially. He did that. That was horrendous. Right. That was, I'll be honest with you, as an American, and we had eight years of Obama, I found that to be appalling. Absolutely. Appalling. Yep. And even to attempt to do this, this is so un-American. Right. They have no problem with it, actually. They have no problem with it. And again, they're trying to stop those press conferences. Why? Because they are effective for him and they know it. They know it. But sadly, Joe P, the media outrages don't stop there. But real quick, I do want to mention uh, something that I, that I came across, uh, an example of this, okay? And this was in this article. The, the article, this particular part of this segment at the front line with Joe and Joe, um, Joe Casillo and Joe Resinello, uh, came from an article originally. The source of this is Molly Hemingway, okay? I think she was writing this in Federalist. the Federalist. So uh, she says, as an example, now it's important, 
As an example, this group called Free Press, okay, remember that folks out there who are watching us, Free Press is the name of the group. This group um, successfully lobbied the FCC under President Obama to regulate the internet via Title II net neutrality. If all you good folks out there remember that fight over net neutrality and the implementation of those rules, and that was later repealed by FCC Chairman Ajit Pai, who described free press, get this, as a spectacularly misnamed Beltway lobbying group, because that's what they are. Joe, they're not, they're leftists. They're not interested in free press. They're interested in a press that they can control, a, le a, a press that's ideological, that's not interested in hearing all points of view. So let's, let's make that clear. But you were about to give an example no, of- No, I was just uh, talking about, you alluded to it. CNN aired only portions of Trump's free, uh, press briefings over the last week and reminded us, as in the American people, of the virulent Trump hatred and aversion as opposed to letting Americans watch the briefing for themselves. To put it another way, CNN doesn't believe that we the people can determine what's important for our own sake. Right. That's why they don't want to put it on. They absolutely could care less about America as an aggregate and as a whole. They have their agenda, they could care less. And here's another thing, and you touched on this as well, Joe, the ratings are in the sewer. Sure they are. CNN's ratings are in the sewer. You see, I'll be honest with you. Who's the president? Zucker? Uh, Jeff Zucker, yep. Should be fired. Purely from a business perspective. Well, listen, Jeff Zucker is the one... Money. Jeff Zucker is the one who basically said, um, and he was busted. I think it was... I don't, I don't remember if it was... Um, what's the group that does all the exposing? Um, the undercover uh, videos and things like that. Uh, James O'Keefe's group. Veritas? Veritas, okay. The, um, Jeff Zucker was basically busted saying it's all about impeachment. He was telling the people underneath him, it's all about impeachment. It's all about impeachment. Jeff Zucker, abs I don't even know with their ratings tanking what their board of directors look like. In other words, how is it that the board of directors aren't saying to him, look, we need to be a little bit more objective at this station or else you're fired. Okay. I don't, I, Joe, I don't get it right on the head. And I'm, I'm speaking not politically. I'm speaking purely from a business, from a business point of view. Yeah. He has made a choice. He has chosen a business model. He is targeting his news towards a specific demographic. Frankly, it's not making the station money nor is it gaining them the respect of their peers and the American people? The people don't have faith in the media anymore. Right. Therefore, sir, you are in charge. Your ideas are not being fruitful for this company. You are relieved of your duty. Mm -hmm. Take politics out of it. I am amazed he still has his job. Right. I'm well, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll see. I mean, Trump's... Trump's reelection is going to make, I think, a lot of heads roll, uh, particularly in the media, because uh, unless unless they think they're going to do for another four years what they did to him for the first four years, which all that's going to do is make the American people, even independents and Democrats, OK, make them a lot more angry so that they may vote. If you get a Trump like Republican who runs for president in 2024, you might get a continuation of the Trump presidency. You may. The same way you did. Reagan was a revolution. This is a revolution. This fighting against the deep state, this fighting against the swamp, this is a revolution, okay? Papa Bush didn't fight this revolution. That's why he was a one-term president, all right? His, his son, he didn't do anything to drain the swamp, okay? Certainly, you don't expect any of that from Bill Clinton and Obama. So the thing is, this is really a revolution. And the thing is, this re revolution may carry forward to 2024, and get another Republican, like a Josh Hawley, hopefully, or somebody like that, elected president. What? Where is Jim Acosta going to go? In other words, where is Jeff Zucker? Where are all these people at CNN? Rachel Maddow, blatantly, they talk about Trump not covering Trump because they want to fact check him. Rachel Maddow went on her went on a tirade last week on her show talking about that ship is not coming to New York. That's a lie. 
There's a video online showing that as she's saying that, the ship is coming into New York Harbor, the Navy ship. I don't know if it's the comfort or the mercy. They talk about his lies. They lie with every breath that they can muster. What are they going to do? I think a lot of heads are going to roll if Trump gets re when Trump gets reelected. I really believe that. Well, at, least, honest, at least I hope. I hope. Joe, I mean, not only has these shenanigans gone on, but they've had a lot of misses with regard to this, this pandemic. I mean, they attacked the travel ban, and I'll be specific. On January 21st, the Trump administration instituted a travel ban to stop the flow of infected people from China to the United States. However, critics of the Trump administration roundly attacked the China travel ban as ineffectual, anti-science, and xenophobic. And what did, go ahead, go ahead. No, the idea that the federal government took precautions and, precautions and shut down borders to prevent the spread of COVID-19 is athema in a media environment in which the concept of borderless societies is taken as a given. And that is true. That's right. And, and here's the thing too, he issues a travel ban and not long after that, he issues a travel ban against Europe, right? On Europe. What does Europe do after that? They started, they started closing their borders. I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't get it. He does things that are necessary, and all the, and all the oligarchs in Europe have to say, we're going to have to shut our borders. Do you, you, you know what I mean? But yet, he's the bad guy. And then they want to complain, well, why didn't you do it sooner? But then if you did it sooner, they would have said, well, yeah, but you're, you're, you're racist against the Chinese. Well, they we're, complained we're, when he did it. And that's, that, on, that's on record. He shut this down. I got news for you, and I'll, I would bet anything on it. Do you think Barack Obama, if he was the president in January 31st of this year, would have shut the borders down from China? Absolutely not. No chance. Right. And, no, and, let the, and I'm sorry, all you Barack Obama fans out there. There is no, the border would still, you would still be able to fly back and forth to China. if you. I were, bet you would. Right. They, you know what the media would be saying? You know what the media would be saying? Bad stats coming out of China. Only 3,000 people died in China. Right. I mean, how many people have died in the United States up to this point? Is it 20,000 yet? I, I don't, I don't, I think, don't think it's 20,000 yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this has been going on. We're in April. So this has been going on, let's say, March, February, January. Let's say, for argument's sake, over the last 90 days. Okay. If, if, if this was 20,000 people dying from, they first of all wouldn't be calling it a virus. If this was Barack Obama's president, they would not be calling this a virus. They would be calling it a flu. They might actually be calling it the Kung flu. Okay, they wouldn't call it a virus. And they would say, well, relative to other viruses and other flus, it's not so bad, which actually would be a truthful statement. If you look at how many people died because of the actual flu, how many people died from H1N1 and some of the others, this is not the disaster that they're making it out to be. The media wouldn't even cover this. There would barely be a press conference. You would still be working in, in Manhattan rather than at a, out of your home, and I would still be going to work in the city. I wouldn't be out of a job and on unemployment. Guaranteed. So much, I'm not downplaying. We know people who died. My wife, my wife just got an email from one of our friends at the parish. Okay, two priests have died. Uh, a couple of our parishioners have died. I'm not downplaying the fact that people are dying from this. What we're talking about is how the media is hyping this, how they're trying to create panic where there should be a respectful fear of getting this Kung flu, okay? They've created a panic, and why? For political reasons. All their heads should roll. No, I don't mean it that we're gonna start a revolution and start decapitating people, but figuratively speaking, a lot of their heads should roll. Go ahead, you're, I know you're, are you referencing the article from, are you referencing the article from Jared Stetman? To be truthful, I don't, I don't recall where I got the blurb, but what I wanted to discuss was the use of the Chinese virus language policing that's been right. going on in the media. Basically in January and February, most media outlets had no problem using the term Wuhan virus. Or China virus. They were saying this openly, but all of a sudden it was like a switch flipped and it was like a memo went out and it basically prompted journalists to begin attacking the term as racist. Right. They were using the term, not Trump. 
Well, he was using it, but so were they. And it was almost like a, a, an email went out. Stop it. Change the change it. Call them a racist. And, it, and they all started to. They stopped saying, they call it now COVID-19 as right. opposed to Wuhan. And we've covered this on other shows. It's commonplace to use the term of, of the origin and attach it to the flu. Right, West Nile, German, vi German measles, West Nile yeah, virus, all of it. It, it. It's just common. But you see, this is the games that they play. They are a part of the Democratic Party. Right. The media is a wing. It's the attack dog of the Democratic Party. And I'll tell you this, and I've said this on our Crusade Channel um, show, from now on, we need Republicans, like it or not people, like Donald Trump, because this is a fist fight, and you have to get into the gutter with these people. This is, this is not the free press. They don't represent the American people. They right. represent leftist ideas. Right. They don't represent John Q. Public in Southern Bergen County, New Jersey. Get right. lost. They don't even they don't even represent the Democrats that traditionally vote for them. Like the Democrats who might who might say, well, you know what, I'm not I I, I might be pro now again, we don't agree with it. Well, the de Democrat says, oh, I'm pro-choice, but up to a certain point. Well, no, you shut up. We give you your union contract. Or the, the, the feminists who say, why are you allowing transgender boys to run in, in girls' track meets? They say, you shut up. We give you abortion. We give you the sexual revolution. Don't say a word. In other words, you, you know, they, they just keep the, 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 the they, they have all their points and you will follow them. If you don't like it, tough, tough. If you don't like it, we won't give you what you want. That's how they keep control. Obama called it coalitions of power, unions, feminists, homosexuals, right down the line. In other words, give everybody what they want, and when they complain about something else, tell them, we'll stop giving you what you said you wanted. So, you know, and you could go on example and example and example. But yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's amazing what they got away with. But go ahead, what's, what was their third mission? Well, here's, uh, here's something else that you, sadly you don't hear about. Um, the TV news is silent on a new Biden sex abuse allegation. It's been nearly a week since former Joe Biden staffer Tara Reid leveled disturbing accusations of sexual misconduct against the Democratic former uh, the Democratic presidential run uh, front runner, and yet ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, and CNN haven't said a single word about it now repeat that repeat basically, that basically there have been another allegation of sexual misconduct i.e joe touching people i.e the way he should not be and abc cbs nbc msnbc and cnn haven't said a single word about it now you may be saying to yourself well, while you may think it's because of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, that's not true. Because in the same time period, CNN, MSNBC, and NBC have hosted Biden for a total of three interviews, including an hour-long town hall on CNN. And no host asked a single question about these new charges. Now, I want to juxtapose that with Brett Kavanaugh. It was 12 days following the first report of Christine Blasey Ford's claim against Kavanaugh. The ABC's, the CBS's, and the NBC morning shows and evening news showed out, turned out 300. mentioned that none of the witnesses let me repeat that again go so hold on one second because you 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 cut off you cut off for a second technology what are you going to do i'll just stop i'll just go from where you were 305 minutes of coverage of the kavanaugh fiasco okay i know that's where you were going but go ahead yes well basically 305 minutes of the kavanaugh claims coming from uh, coverage from the media on christine blasey ford and they only gave five minutes mention that none of the witnesses named by Ford 
would confirm her story. These were her friends. Right. They never would confirm it. Now, that, that, now, now, let me ask you a question. When Donald Trump, to the consternation of Jim Acosta and the rest of them, say that the press, the, the press, the media in America is the enemy of the people. It is. That's an example. They would say, well, what do you mean? Why are you not giving equal coverage to two similar allegations? Tara Reid says Joe Biden uh, did some sort of sexual misconduct towards her. You give it no time, and you've had the guy on now a number of times. Yet, Christine Blasey Ford comes out with allegations that cannot be corroborated, where none of her friends remember it. Such a hollow accusation, okay? And you cover it night and day for as long as it lasted. And then you're going to try to tell me that you're not my enemy? Not because I want you to agree with me, but you're going to try to say that one is worth covering and the other is not? By what standard? Joe, is, is, actually, they're your enemy because they're swaying the powers that be against you. That's why they're your enemy. Mm. And they're swaying them through influence and, frankly, manipulation. That's why they're your enemy. And that's why the press is the enemy of the American people. You see, serious, quote unquote, journalists freak out when he says that, particularly who's that guy on Fox who thinks he's like Walter uh, Cronkite? I can't, uh, what the hell's his name? Not, uh, is it Brett Baer or? Um... No, 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 he's like an older gentleman. He's on uh, Sunday mornings. Like, I can't think of his name. <clears throat> but when he says this, like he's like the quote unquote, like guy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when they, when he says this, he shivers. This is Fox because he's attacking his profession. Well, you know something? Journalism is dead. You're right. Journalism is dead. In do you America. know that the do, let me let me tell you something. They could attack social media all they want. Every bit of actual news, I'm talking about hard news. Something happens, something report, somebody's reporting on it. I'm a pretty up-to-date guy. And for at least for the last couple of weeks since uh since Kung Flu, I've had the TV on at a very minimal. Okay. I get all my news from social media, okay? And I have been kept abreast of everything's going on, and I'm only talking about hard news, not spin or anything like that, just what's going on here, what's going on there, okay? Uh, what's going on with this, what's going on with that, all from social media. So they could attack social media all they want, but the fact is I actually get my news from social media without the spin. It's actual news, Yo, and they can't stand that. Because that's a big threat to their power. Look at how Benghazi was covered during the election. Oh, it's disgusting. That was disgusting. I'll be honest with you. Any person that was in journalism, if you take your career seriously, should be ashamed of that. Do you know how that you want to know the biggest way that backfired? Because in a venue that they could not control, Trump said one thing, one thing that uh, that the media could, could do nothing about and couldn't stop him from saying and, ha and had no idea he was actually going to say it is when he told Clinton after she said, well, I imagine the level of mind if you were president. I can't imagine. He says, because you'd be in jail. What you mentioned about Benghazi, I think res that, that when Trump said that about her, I think that's what people thought. I think he was talking about emails and things like that but they thought about how she got away with Benghazi. And I think that that's what really propelled him when he said, because you'd be in jail, okay? And that's, and that's why they can't stand social media. Um, and they can't stand it when the, somebody like Trump's able to go over their heads because they can't control the narrative. And when he said that, like you, I'm bringing this up only because of what you, you brought up Benghazi, that was the American people saying, that should have happened to her because of Benghazi. It didn't, that's a shame but I'm gonna go out and vote for this guy because at least he had the balls to say it. You'd be in jail if I was president of the United States. Well, let's, speaking of Benghazi, let's go to our friend Barack Obama. He took to Twitter. Real, you, uh, we, got, we got a few minutes. Do you, you mind real quick? I, I did want to mention one other thing, Joe. Yeah, go, go, if that's go. Okay. Go. Um, in, uh, in Jared Setman's, uh, the three misses you brought up, you brought up the, the language policing and the travel bans. But I, I, I did think that this was important because I just want to blow, blow a little hole in this. Um, Trump derangement and the fishbowl fluid. You heard about that story? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah. 
So, so uh, Cuomo, Trump, uh, they've touted the possibility of this uh, hydroxychloroquine being a potential treatment. Um, again, the possibility. Nobody said it was an actual treatment, okay? And the media went ballistic <clears throat> because an Arizona couple who, and the reason this is a media misstep, that's why we're bringing this up, okay? That's why Jared Stepman brought it up, okay? It was a media misstep. They tried to make it seem like these were two sycophantic Trump supporters who just have no brains whatsoever, and they just listen to everything that President Trump says. And when he mentioned chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, they drank fishbowl cleaner, okay? He died, and <clears throat> she ended up in the hospital. And again, this is the way the media tried to portray it, okay? And if you look at the story, they're both big Democrat supporters. They hate Donald Trump, okay? And they're basically two goofy people who, 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 who thought that drinking fishbowl cleaner was going to stop the coronavirus. The reason why it was a medium misstep is because they portrayed it as though these were two, this is, basically they portrayed it as this is your average Trump supporter. Moron, idiot, just follows orders, doesn't think about anything. In the meantime, there are two big Democrat donors. Um, or no, let me not say big, but there are two people who supported Democrats. They're Democrats. They're not Republicans. And they're not, she, in fact, hates Donald Trump. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Well, I just want to throw out a little John Kennedy. Life is hard, but it's harder when you're stupid. <laughs> and that's all I got to say, dude. And those people, <laughs> those people, those people are stupid. So I think, we, I, I, think, I think we, um, I think we covered, um, we covered all things, all things media as, uh, as far as Donald Trump is concerned here on the front line with Joe and Joe, Joe Pasillo and Joe Resinello. But I did put this in my notes, Joe, and I think it's very important to mention. Remember when Donald Trump talked about winning? Sure. He is, he is crushing them like our blessed Virgin Mother Mary crushed the head of the serpent. He is crushing them. He is winning, okay? Um, and most importantly, he's winning for us. And the, and the reason why I bring it up is because that's what they can't stand. Because if he's winning, that means you're winning. All the people out there, including us, and all the people like us who think rational, rationally and reasonably, that's what they can't stand. We, we are the ones that are winning. So anyway, I wanted to throw that in there. So where are we headed? I was going to say, Joe... I believe in guns. I got a truck. I got a dog, and I'm American with an M. <laughs> Mark, and we're winning the game. Love it. Let's go to Barack Obama. He Do we takes, have to? Oh, sadly, he takes to Twitter this week uh, to use the virus to attack Donald Trump and to, and to promote his climate agenda. I believe it was Rahm Emanuel who famously said, "Never let a serious crisis go to waste." Uh, our former president, to whom uh, Mr. Emanuel served as the chief of staff, seemed to have not forgotten that le uh, lesson, Joe P. This week, Obama took to Twitter to criticize those who denied the pandemic and tie it to the need to end climate change denial. Let me go to the direct quote, and then we could have a discussion. We've seen all too terribly the consequences of those who denied warnings of the pandemic. We can't afford any more consequences of climate denial. All of us, especially the young, have to demand better of our government at every level and vote this fall. Now, this is what I want to bring up. The comparison of this virus to climate control or climate, what, what the hell is it? Climate change. Climate change denial. Dude, it's apples and oranges. And frankly, it's absurd. There is not one scientist right now that believes that the ravages of climate change might kill 100,000 Americans in the upcoming months. Not even Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez would suggest such a thing. And she's super intelligent. And it's absolutely ridiculous. The Chinese virus is absolutely a crisis right now now and the two things have nothing to do with one another <clears throat> and frankly this is another thing you know barack obama was given a wide berth 
by George W. Bush. Like him or not, and most people on the left hated him. I know the media hated him. They, they hated him. They didn't hate him as much as Trump, and I thought they hated him like no one's ever been hated. Mm -hmm. He gave that man a ton of respect, and he acted like such a gentleman. Like him or not, that's a fact. Of course, Barack Obama has to open his mouth. Why? Because Trump is destroying his legacy. He's watching it happen, and his megalomaniac ego can't take it. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. When James Carville turned around, he, he went on the, the Sunday morning talk show, he said, y'all can't, y'all can't, uh, y'all can't stand the fact that the, that the Harvard professor's whipping your butt. He went in your ass, right? And he went, and he, remember when he said that? I do. Barack, Barack Obama can't stand the fact that the, the, uh, the, the real estate, New York, New York City real estate mogul, liberal turned conservative, okay, pro-life, okay, supposedly dumb as a brock to rocks, is kicking the pilot, is kicking the ass of Obama's legacy, okay? He basically neutered Obamacare, okay, by do, getting rid of the individual mandate. OK, he's put in the protections for the little sisters of the poor and other religious exemptions. OK, Obama can't stand this. He's kicking your ass, Obama. Trump's kicking your ass. You can't stand it. <laughs> <Right? laughs> it's good stuff. And that's the truth. And that's the truth. So, you know, remember something, too. It's always, well, he's so presidential and he went to Harvard. Who gives who gives a you know what? Who cares? I Trump really don't care about president. When you when people start acting president. civilly. I'll call on Donald Trump to act civilly when you act civilly, but you don't act civilly, okay? You never do. You never show civility at, at, ever, okay? You never accept the, 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 the legitimate result of a presidential election. You've never accepted it, okay? So I don't care if he doesn't sound presidential to you. To me, he sounds presidential. He's exactly the type of president I want, the guy who punches you right in the face who doesn't let you get away with your lies and your slander and your calumny and your libel and all of it. He doesn't let you get away with it, ever. Yeah, Barack Obama should go to his $40 million uh, Martha's Vineyard house. Right, and just shut up like you, like exactly. you said. Like, be thankful that he basically was able to make more money after being the president than he ever would have if he wasn't. Right. and be thankful and go to his $40 million house that he is vacation home because he bought a $9 million house after that, before that, in Washington, D.C. How do you get so rich? Please. Getting $400,000 a pop for Cantor Fitzgerald. Right. That's the, the, the thing that's laughable. All these people who embrace this cat as if he's like for the, for the brothers in the hood, for <laughs> this, for that. Give right. me a freaking break. <clears throat> Right. Give me a break. He's an elitist. He's an elitist. Right. It's it's laughable. It's actually comical. You think he really cares? You think he cares about the, he cares as much as those kids in the inner city as Saul Alinsky did. They're just means to an end of their political power. They are used and, and let me listen, black people are waking up. Um and Trump's at what? What did we say? Twenty five percent. Thirty percent approval rating. It if may he be even gets higher. If he even gets half that of, of, of African-Americans who actually translate that approval into voting for him, I don't care who they put up. I don't care if they put up Andrew Cuomo, uh, even though I, I don't think Andrew Cuomo could win. I don't think he's all that. Of course, we don't like him. Um, but I don't care who they put up, okay? He's going to win. You know what right? it is? There's a segment of the black population that will watch that, will hear what I just said about he got a 40. Good for that brother. He got over. He got over. He got over on you. Right. He got he over got on over you, not on me. He didn't get over on me. He got right. over on you. And even black intellectuals like Cornell West, he'll say that too. He, who's a liberal, right? He'll say he got over on you. He didn't get over on me. And that's the laugh. That's the that where it's just like you're not looking at things clearly. Right. Right. That's funny. That's all I oh, it's 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 not actually funny, but you but you know what I mean. But yeah, I think to put a finer point on that one, Obama just should he should do what president I told you the story. I think I did at the front line with Joe and Joe, Joe Pasillo and Joe Resinello. Um my father always told me the story about uh Harry Truman. Um after Eisenhower won and was inaugurated, Harry Truman got in his car, got in the car with Bess, drove down to Missouri, 
And except for a couple of times you have that, you never really heard from him again. You know who else did that? George Bush. George Bush went down to Crawford. I'm, I'm talking about W. He went down to Crawford, Texas. He's popped up a couple of times here and there. Hasn't said anything about politics. He's acted presidential. He joins the former presidents uh, when, when, um, when it's called for, for an event or something like that. He was there at a couple with his father and Clinton and himself um, and Obama when Obama was out of office or even with Obama when he was in office. But for the most part, he's got class. Obama's showing me right now he could have all the Harvard certificates on the wall that he wants. He's got no class. When you're a political ideologue and that's all you do is eat, sleep, and breathe your political ideology, and this is what you do, especially in a time like this, you bring in climate change that has nothing to do with this whatsoever, which is a hoax. I wish we would finally have a debate in this country about it, okay? It's a hoax. You show you've got no class. Can I make one point, Joe, before we go to the next segment? Go, go, go. On that point, I know it won't matter. I hope somehow, some way, this video makes its way through the, through the, uh, you know, the web of, you know, the interweb and all that kind of stuff. I tweeted Donald Trump the other day. Oh, okay? Lord. I, I, <laughs> so I directed a tweet at Donald Trump. He gets millions. Don't know if he'll see it. He gave, a, because Pelosi wanted it, he signed the bill. $75 million to the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, okay? I believe that money, because it, because it involves, you know, PBS, I, you know, it, it's, a public, it's a public station, that he could direct some of that. I would like for him to tell them that what they have to do with a portion of that money is they have to find five climatolo uh, 10 climatologists, the world's leading climatologists, okay, Five who think that man-made climate change is a hoax and five who think it's not and sponsor a national debate that YouTube, Facebook, and all social media all have to broadcast it because it's a public service, basically a public service debate and let these 10 men or men and women go at it and finally expose climate change for what it is, which is a hoax. If you don't believe me and you don't think it's a hoax, then let them direct $7 million of that $75 million, 10% roughly, and tell them you must sponsor this debate and you have six months to do it. If you really think that this is, a, that this is something that we need to talk about, climate change, then let's have a national debate and let the government fund it. You just borrowed $75 million to give to, to the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, okay? Well, you demand that some of that money be used for public service reasons. I think that would be a great idea. And I tweeted that to Donald Trump, said direct them to finally hold the debate on climate change. You'll, mm. you'll have a knock on your door soon. So. Oh, the, the black helicopters are gonna be floating around. If I took a ride in my car tonight and went and got a cup of coffee at the Dunkin' Donuts, I'm sure I'll get pulled over. You know, I'll, you know I'll roll down the window, Joe, and the guy's gonna go, papers, please. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what's our final segment of the night, Joe? Oh, this one's a gem to end on. Uh, this is, uh, I, I title it the coronavirus jailbreak. Uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom commutes the sentences for, get this people, 14 convicted killers. Uh, California Governor Governor Gavin Newsom made the decision to provide early release through parole to about 19 felons, some of whom killed children and one con convict murdered a pregnant woman. Let me just read you the list of a few of them, just to give you an idea what I'm talking about, because I like to get specific. 50-year-old Rodney McNeil convicted of stabbing his pregnant wife to death, released. 35-year-old Christopher Blime, convicted of aiding in a murder, released. 40-year-old Jason Bryant, convicted for witnessing murder during a robbery, released. 56-year-old Stephen Bradley, convicted of murdering a gas station attendant, released. 49-year-old Ramon Rodriguez, convicted of murdering a person for pay. So a hitman. 49 years old, too. 56-year-old right. James Harris, convicted of kidnapping and murdering two people, released. 48-year-old Robert Glass, convicted of murdering a burglary victim, released. 
in California. Who is this governor to supersede justice and release these people? Listen, I don't know what these cats are about. Maybe they've changed their life and they're model prisoners. But don't you think they have a debt to pay to society? These well, are you, not trivial crimes. Joe, when you talk about real meaningful prison reform, like Donald Trump has been trying to do to examine people who are in prison, who maybe we could show some mercy, some leniency, like he did for that African-American woman, I forgot her name, because uh, the uh, Kim Kardashian asked him to review the case, and he did, and a number of others. Okay, I'm for that. I do think that there's some people in jail who- I for that too. Right. But, you're, but look at what you're talking about here, okay? Look at what you're talking about with this list. And this is where, this is where you have to look at Gavin Newsom and Andrew Cuomo as not being some liberal Democrats. They are hardcore leftists. Why do I say that? Joe, you have, you have instability right now in our country, okay, because of the coronavirus. What is it that the left thrives on? What brings about revolution, their revolution as they see it? more and more instability. Instability leading to violence. Violence leading to the government amassing more powers to itself to combat that violence. And then what you have at the end of the day is a transition from what we have now to more of the police state that they need to achieve their communist utopia. That's what they want. Don't think that releasing these prisoners, violent prisoners from prison, is not deliberate and for the reason I just said. Let me read you something else from that article, just so we're clear about this, okay? You brought up a few people in New York. Now, this was reported by Breitbart, okay? Andrew Cuomo, Governor Andrew Cuomo, insisted that at least 1,100 inmates be released from prison prison during the coronavirus, and they allowed eight sex offenders, three of whom raped children, to be freed back into the general public. Well, of course, New York has to, cannot be outdone by California. He has right. the answer. But, but remember something. You don't have two liberal Democrats running New York and California. You have two hardcore leftists that want to add to the instability that we're going through right now because they want to add to the level of violence. That's what they want to do. That is always their goal. When they talk about emptying prisons, they're not talking about a kid who's in jail for carrying a couple of joints in his back pocket which I say, yes, let's do something about that. Let's review that case. But sex offenders who rape children, you never get out of jail. You forfeited your, maybe you didn't forfeit your life. Maybe we're not gonna kill you with the death penalty, but you're never gonna get out of prison. Until your penis doesn't work anymore, or something we could do, let's say, to reduce your sex drive, you will never be let out of prison, okay? And even under those circumstances, you still have, like you said, Joe, you still have a debt to pay. But when you're interested in trying to foment revolution or, or the revolution that's going to come about through civil instability and violence, then this makes all the sense in the world that the Andrew Cuomo's and the Gavin Newsom's would be doing this. It makes all the sense in the world. This is why we as a real sane Americans, Democrats, independents, and Republicans have to come together to say the left is our enemy. This is what they want. These are their goals. This is how they go about it. So when they try to do it, we collectively say, no, no, we're not going to let you do it. And until we do that, JoJo, they're going to keep trying to get, they're going to keep getting away with this. They're going to. And it's a sad, sad thing. Well, that's why we got to keep speaking the truth. That's it. That's right. That's right. And we want to thank you all for joining us here at the front line with Joe and Joe. Uh, next week, I promise our production value is going to be a lot higher, but we didn't want to not give you some uh, some good front line with Joe and Joe conversation. Uh, we're going to work on this. We uh, we want to we want to make make our videos uh, even more informative than they are, uh, make them more entertaining for you, and that's because uh, that's our goal. We know that we love the fact that you listen to us every week, undoubtedly. All right, and we're so grateful for that. So it's our job, like we said. We're just going to keep up in our game and up in our game so our show is better so that you will like it more. And you'll hopefully share it with your friends. As you have been doing, please share this video with your friends. Um, next week, we're going to be, uh, I think we're going to be able to go live on Facebook. We'll let you know during the week. And, uh, and Joe and I will probably start maybe adding a little bit more content during the week. All of that is in the works. But in the meantime, remember from Joe Resinello and Joe Pasillo that our conversation is your conversation. And that conversation is going on everywhere. So we'll see you next time. Stay safe out there.